Like we are privileged. How many in here graduated from high school? Raise your hands, right? But if you look at statistically, our people are not graduating from high school. So all of us that are here are privileged. We all speak the same language. The challenge is how do we reach the folks that aren't speaking the same language? We are privileged to be here. I know it took me a long road to get here. Jason had me reading Bell Hooks novels and all types of stuff. Because at first I was just like, it's the white man and I don't eat pork, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and that was it, and that was it. And that's like, I'm a revolutionary, you know what I mean? But then it took, it took him to, you know, other people to kind of influence me and talk to me about other things. And then I'm at a level where I'm, I'm able to communicate with the elites. And I consider these folks some of the, elite, some of the elites. The challenge is gonna be us, for us consistently to, be, to challenge ourselves as artists first, to challenge and make music as competitive as Waka Flocka Flame. Like I want my music to sound like Waka Flocka Flame, but I want to have a message in it. You know what I'm saying? Like I want to be able to reach the youth where they're at. You know what I mean? Ultimately, I think that's one of the goals of, as an artist. And there's a quote on uh, at the musical space that we came from. It was called Q4. It was an open mic space in Humble Park, and it said the goal of a artist is to make the revolution irresistible. Um, and 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 I think I think we live by that. You know, and 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 of course I, I expected when I came to University of Chicago uh, to be speaking to students from University of Chicago. I expect that if I want to meet the community, I'm, if I want to go to the hood and speak, if I'm going to Inglewood, I know what I'm going I'm to run up against. If I go to Austin, I know what I'm going to run up against. People, we're not going to travel to spaces that are uncommon to us, you know? And then on top of that, we're using all these big, humongous words about this is that and this is that, and they may not, may not be able to break all that down. They may not be able to break all of that information. I'm not trying to lower us down and say that we can't. I'm just saying at the same time, some folks may not be able to break that down. And you may alienate them from the movement. So. I think this space is pretty cool in its autonomy of the elite, but I also think that it's our jobs to go out into the community and also reach out to the folks that are there. We feel our responsibility is first and foremost to make the music that we like, you know? Like I think, at least for us, like in a group, like a lot of us, like we wake up in the morning and listen to Waka Flocka, you know? Like we like, we share with each other like GCJ's new mixtape, you know? Like these are like these are the things that we like and care about also, right? Like we know it's you know, like we know it's sexist, we know it's homophobic, like we know like the music in and of itself is messed up. But at the end of the day, like that's the music of our people. And then I think that part then informs us like on um, like I wanna make music that sounds and gets me hyped just like that, you know, and then and the idea is that like we're supposed to I mean, we're just supposed to make music that's dope, that's like, that's hyped up. Like, I, I mean, I like JD, JD's dope, JD's cool, whatever, you know, like, I personally, I don't smoke weed, and like, I don't like, I don't get messed up, so I don't like feel it in that way, you know? And I come from like a generation, I come from the 80s, you know, I come from like a really hyped up generation, you know, and I want music that speaks to that. And so for me, my first purpose as like an artist is to make music that speaks to me, and if I make artists, if I make music that actually speaks to me, then I feel like I'm gonna make artists that actually speaks then to my daughter, and then like my daughter is saying those hooks, right? Like, and then I make music that actually speaks to the kids that that I used to work with as a youth organizer, you know. And like the best way that I knew that if we were doing something right or if we were really onto something was if like like those kids that I worked with were actually like listening and interacting with that music, you know. And so I think the first thing is to like. I think as artists is to always, for me, I always realize like I'm in, I'm in community with 3-6 Mafia, you know, like that's, they're, they're part of my community, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm in community with Outkast, I'm in community with, with Rhymefest, right? But, and, and once I realize that I'm in community with folks that necessarily I don't agree with politically, um, but that I still respect like as an artist, I feel like then I can make better music, I can make stronger music, and I can make music that um, is, is actually personal to me, because like the personal is political, and if I, if I represent that right, it's gonna come out right, so. Um, I, I think too that, um, I think part of the responsibility of artists um, is to create the soundtrack of, uh, of, of what's going on right now. Um, and you know, to me, especially when you look at like our community, and then you look at the type of music that, that is especially mainstream culture says representative of our community, it's two completely different pictures. Because the majority of, of people in our community not popping champagne, we not throwing money around. Like it, we, it's a recession. You know what I'm saying? People are hurting. People are suffering. People are barely getting by. You know what I'm saying? People are angry and upset about the current state of of of, of the government locally, um, regionally, and nationally. Um, so I think part of what our artist's responsibility to do is speak to uh, what is currently happening in the streets and around the country. And I think that um, to me, if you look at 
music that is considered timeless and music that considered classic. It was always music that spoke to what was happening in that generation, and it was always music that had some type of message in it. So I think that there's something specifically in our communities that we need to address that we don't want to be positive. Like, and, and so I look at music like this. Man, forget talking about being positive, because all these positive rappers I be meeting in real life is phonies. And the, and the ones that I meet that are so-called negative ain't that negative. They really positive. True. And so, you know, I think that when we're talking about music, the artist has a responsibility to have a balance of the theme of life. And the theme of life ain't always positive and it ain't always negative. You know but it's I mean? kind of hard for me to sit here and hear people... Uh, you know, harp on the Waka Flocka, Soulja Boy, Gucci Mane's. I remember even me and Ryan Fest had a conversation about Little B in the barbershop without, and you talk about Marvin Gaye, but when Marvin Gaye talked about sexual healing, we all knew what he was talking about. When Curtis Mayfield said, I'm your mother, I'm your daddy, I'm that nigga in the alley, I'm your doctor, what you need, want some coke, want some weed, push your man. He was talking about selling drugs back then. Pam Greer was hypersexualized. So again, I don't want to make it, a, an intergenerational battle, but we have to think critically about how our generation has learned things because maybe we may be more crass in the way we say things in my generation, but please believe there were hypersexualized images in our parents' day and our grandparents' day, um, and there are many examples of that. So I just wanted to throw that out. I have, the issue that I have is not talking about what's happening in our community because, like you said, there's violence, there's drugs, there's death in our community. That's the reality. You know what I'm saying? But that's not. You know, that's not something that happens on our community 100% of the time, but that seems like that's 100% of the representation, one. And two, a lot of these artists, you know what I'm saying, are so far removed from that. I'm talking about years, or you got artists that have not even done that, you know what I'm saying? We come to find out that, you know, you was a correction officer, or you was some, you know, you got college degrees, which is good, but you know, but you're pretending to be something and glamorizing a lifestyle. That, that, and then so what's happening now is like people like are trying to hustle and bust guns that don't have to. We make music as BBU, we are called Bin Laden blowing up. Like we knew that like no record company's gonna come running to us. We knew like that we were taking a shot at ourselves when we started, you know? And that's okay because we feel that we're gonna make music that could overpower that and that the people are gonna listen to and that we could reach them. And we make sounds that are relatable to the youth now link the things that we listen to the things that they grew up listening to and that is happening right now and we just want to be able to make that connection and we do that we merge all different types of sounds and all different types of uh just ideas and everything that's going on and like that's the only reason why i'm here and doing this is to reach the youth and to teach them because there's not enough people there and half of us don't have parents you know and that's the reason there is a gap because we don't have parents we grew up and there's not the fatherly figure there we grow up and we're in like different homes day to day and we don't know what's going on you know so like how can we find that stuff when it's not there like she was saying too like we it is on everyone here the youth and the elderly to come together and just do positive stuff um the other thing I wanted to say too is that music is not just a reflection of our current reality. And if it is a reflection, it has to be a very specific, accurate reflection, first of all. Um, not a glorified reflection, as you said, um, like in a really shallow way, but something that's really deep and personal. So I've, I've seen some people that make, you know, mirror music that's all about the harsh realities, but it's about the pain and the tragedy that they've experienced, you know, not something that's gonna make it seem like just, you know, throwing money all over your, um, your bed or whatever, is that it's not just about reflecting it, but also about shaping reality, right? There's a, a famous quote that I, that I quote in my song, Shapeshifters, music's not a mirror to reflect reality. It's a hammer with which we shape it. And to me, that's, that's my philosophy. And then something that just occurred to me is that there's, there's three different approaches that I take, and I think a lot of artists that give a F take in their music, and that's um, to either advocate either be an advocate, a healer, or an amplifier, and most of the time, all three of those, yeah. you know, kind of interconnect. So whether you're, you know, spending your time advocating for different issues or different movements in your work, like what series work, you know, definitely does, and some of my work does that directly, like this is an issue I want to uplift through this song, and I want to lend it to this movement to spread the word about it, you know, you can act advocate through your work. I think there's times when we're healers through our work, like what you were saying about Ribbon in the Sky or other songs where they're not so literal, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes as an artist especially, it's like you don't want to be literal. You want to just express through metaphors and through something that's completely separate from the issue you're talking about, but that relates to it. 
I want to say that I have no problem with artists expressing themselves, but I'm not worried about the artist and their space to express themselves. I'm worried about the young person that doesn't get anything but that. Right. I'm worried about the young person that has no outlet, no stop, no Gen Y, no blocks together, no C2, no any, no Chicago Freedom School, no outlet to that, and all they hear is that, and they want something different. Right, right. Know that, that there is something to being black, and there is racism, and there is, um, you know, brutality by the police and all of these things. But at the end of the day, the larger issue is we can't let our individual survival overshadow the group. So when we look back to the 60s, we see people willing to take bites from dogs and willing to take, you know, hoses to the head and billy clubs to the back. And I think the, the, the 2011 equality to that is the ability to say, yes, I know I'm being oppressed as a black person, but there's a bigger issue here. We are being bombarded with messages of consumerism that make us erode our own values in our own household and it quiets our own voice to be able to hear what it is that we're really here to do. And until we, we kind of shut that out and see what's really going on, we won't be able to make the progress and, and overcome the media. We, we have to stop listening. We have to stop listening. You can get your news from other places. I want to um, echo what you were just saying like about education. Um, and specifically about community-led education because the education system has failed um, and is completely outmoded, like you said, was built for an industrial age and jobs that no longer exist. So one of my philosophies and the philosophies of the work I'm a part of in Detroit is how do we create freedom schools and community education spaces for people to learn intergenerationally and that's directed by the learners, you know, specifically the youth, to be able to hands-on transform themselves in their communities and their neighborhoods, you know, to be able to identify problems going on in their lives and their communities and and innovate how they want to solve those together and then the subjects that they're learning are funneling directly into the hands-on projects that they're doing to address those issues that's when learning becomes relevant and that's when learning becomes exciting is you know when you're learning it for the purpose of actually transforming yourself and your community let's be in action all